guys, it's Sarah here. So in this video, I'm going to be going over arterial blood gas. I'm going to explain you how to figure out one in three simple steps, and I'm going to explain you what's going on in your body. So to start off, arterial blood gas is telling you these stuff. This is your key. It's going to tell you your pH, which is going to tell you how acidic or alkaline your body is. It's going to tell you your how much bicarb your body has. It's going to tell you how much carbon dioxide and how much oxygen your body has. So let's start over here. So when you breathe in, you mainly breathe in oxygen, but you also breathe in some carbon dioxide with it. And when you breathe out, you mainly breathe out carbon dioxide, but you breathe out oxygen with it also. So let's start. You breathe in oxygen with a little bit of carbon dioxide. It goes through your respiratory tract to your alveoli. Over here, it's brought through the veins, the pulmonary veins, which remember, it has a lot of oxygen in it still, and it's brought straight to the heart. The heart, as we know, pumps. So the heart's gonna pump blood to the whole body, to the, all the tissues, your feet, your hands, etc. And the rest of it is going to go, which is mostly carbon dioxide because your body's using all the oxygen, it's going to go through the arteries, A, artery, away, away from the heart, and it's going to take it back to the alveoli, back up the respiratory tract, and you're going to breathe out the carbon dioxide. So just a quick recap, when you breathe in, mainly oxygen comes in, you're going to, it's going to go straight to the alveoli through the pulmonary veins to the heart. The heart's gonna pump it out to all the tissues and then you're not gonna have that much oxygen left. You're gonna have mainly carbon dioxide and your body's gonna try to exhale that to get rid of it. So it's gonna go through the arteries, A, away, the pulmonary arteries, and through the alveoli, back up the respiratory tract and you're gonna exhale. So as we said before, here's the vein and here's the artery. When you take a blood sample, regular blood that you take is usually from the veins. It's usually a VBG, venous blood gas, or regular labs you draw in troponin is always through the veins. So if let's say I would stick the needle, so here's the needle, and I'll take it to the vein, that would be a VBG. When we're doing arterial blood gas, it's usually when we're trying to get the oxygen um, level, etc., and the pH. That would be through an ABG. As we said before, all these are ABGs, and that would be drawn through the artery. It's a little deeper, the artery, than the vein, and the artery pulsates. It has a pulse there. So now let's go on to figure everything out. So your body has two systems that run this whole thing. The respiratory system, as we said, this whole breathing in, breathing out and the metabolic system. The respiratory system we just explained to you. You breathe in, goes to the heart, breathe out, you exhale carbon dioxide. The main thing you want to know about this is that carbon dioxide, whenever you hear that word, think of acid. So your body is very sensitive to even slight changes in the pH. It has to be maintain this pH. If it's too much too low, it's acidic. If it's too high, it's alkaline. I'm going to write that down. So this going this way is alkaline. And going this way is acidic. So if it's too low, it's going to be acidic. Too high, it's going to be alkaline. So think of carbon dioxide acid. So whenever you have too much acid in your body, what are you going to be in? Alkaline state or acid state? You have too much acid, too much carbon dioxide. You're going to be in acidosis. If you have too little carbon dioxide, you have the opposite. You have alkaline. So scenarios are that a patient is hyperventilating. When you hyperventilate, you keep blowing carbon dioxide out. Because remember, we exhale the carbon dioxide. So you're going to go you're gonna breathe out a lot of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is acid, you're breathing it out, so your body is not in acidosis, it's gonna be in the opposite, 
alkali. And to the contrary, when if you read less than you should, and you're retaining, like someone um, who's ethnic, and like let's say I go like this, I'm keeping in all the carbon dioxide, then my body's gonna be in acidosis. So people whose lungs fail or heart fails because the heart's pumping it, um, they're, they could go through extreme acidosis or alkaline. So remember, this happens very fast. You breathe in, you breathe out. If you, if you hold your breath for a long time, you keep it in the acids. Very fast changes in the arterial blood gas. So to balance this out, the body has a different system that helps balance this out. So let's say someone has a weak lungs or heart or something like that, and they're in acidosis. The body it takes a while for it to work, but the metabolic system, which is the renal system, it could take around 12 to 24 hours, it kicks in, and it tries to neutralize it. So your body is in acidosis, it releases either bicarb or hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are acidic and bicarb makes it alkaline. Alkaline. So if your body is acidic, guess what it's going to release? The opposite. Bicarb to neutralize it. If your body is too alkaline, it's going to release the opposite. Acid. But remember, this is a slow system, so it only takes takes around like 12 to 24 hours for it to start working. So I'm just going to review this really quickly and then go through the steps of how to figure out problems. So just a quick recap. We said you breathe in here, it goes through the pulmonary veins to the heart, you pump it all out to the tissues, it goes back through the arteries and out with carbon dioxide. This is what you're going to get from your arterial blood gas. This is, it's going to show you the pH, whether it's acidic or alkaline in your body, the bicarb, the carbon dioxide, and the oxygen. The two systems that manage this whole thing are the respiratory, this is the respiratory, and the metabolic, which is the renal. The metabolic is just there as a buffer. That's right there, it's a buffer. So it's going to buffer whatever, this is too high, it's going to release, if it's too acidic, it's going to release something alkaline to neutralize it. So now let's look at the steps. What you're trying to figure out, the steps of what? The steps is that, is that you're going to get an arterial blood gas here. The results, you want to look at the results to tell you what is the patient having. Is the patient in acidosis, alkalosis, and what type? Is it respiratory? Is it metabolic? That's what you're going to look at. So here are the steps. Number one, there's only three steps. Number one, you're going to look at the pH. That's the first thing. The pH, if it's less than three, if it's less than 7.35, even if it's 7.34, it's still less than 7.35. If it's less than 7.35, patient is acidotic. If it's more than 7.45, patient is alkalotic. So remember, if it's too low, acid, too high, base. The second thing you're going to look at in the steps is which system is causing the abnormal pH. Remember, we have two systems, the respiratory and the metabolic. Who's causing what? So as you remember, the respiratory is the carbon dioxide, the metabolic is the bicarb. So if the respiratory, if the carbon dioxide is too high, then it's caused by the respiratory. If the metabolic is too high, it's caused by the metabolic system. As we wrote over here. If they're both abnormal, they both are too high or too low, then you look at which one is worse. Which one is way off? A carb of 28, too off from what's normal, and you have a carbon dioxide 60, then the carbon dioxide, which is the respiratory system, is the one that's causing it. And the metabolic system is trying to buffer it to make it normal again. So, quick example, your patient comes in with a pH of 
the bicarb, which is HGO3, is 29. The carbon dioxide is 59, and the oxygen is 90. Just made that up. You don't really have to know the oxygen for this APGs. So pH 7.31. Is it too high or too low? So this is normal, so it's too low. So automatically you think acid. So now you want to know what goes before that. Is it respiratory or metabolic? Step two, you're going to look at which one is causing the abnormality. The bicarb is three off. The carbon dioxide is 14 off. So carbon dioxide. So it's a respiratory acidosis. And as we know, the bicarb is off, so it's compensating. And that's pretty much it. So I hope that helps you understand the arterial blood gas. It's pretty simple. It seems complicating because there's a lot of different steps, but it's pretty simple. Just remember. Remember this whole respiratory system, you breathe in, oxygen goes in to the heart, gets pumped out, goes back, and you breathe out carbon dioxide. You have too much carbon dioxide in you, acid. Too little carbon dioxide, alkaline. So remember, carbon dioxide is acid. So there are different like people who COPD could be retaining carbon dioxide in different conditions can make people retain or blow off carbon dioxide, which can make their body's pH go a little off. Metabolic, you're going to remember, is this thing that compensates a lot of times. So it's going to either release bicarb to make it more alkaline or hydrogenize to make it more acidic. The key, I would just remember, pH 7.35 to 7.45, you're going to have to memorize that. HGO3, 22 to 26. CO2, 35 to 45. If you keep doing examples, you'll just remember. It's not that much to remember. And then just remember three simple steps. You look at the pH, too low, acid, too high, alkaline. That's it, step two. You look at which one's causing the pH to be too high or too low. Is it respiratory or metabolic? Which one is off? Which one is not within the normal? If they're both off, which one's more off? and the other one is compensating for it. So I hope that helps and you can write any questions or anything else you want to see and good luck.